almighty B cam. That's what's on the menu today. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So for the longest time, for ages, ever since the internet was invented, there has been talks and arguments and debates about letter cams, AKA alphabet cams, B cam, E cam, F cam, G cam, X cam, Z cam. In this video, I'm not gonna provide you with horsepower gains, or I'm not gonna show you dyno numbers. I'm not gonna do all that because all I can tell you from my experience is seat of the pants type stuff. First off, let's go ahead and get to the meat of everything. So let's say you have a stock bottom end box body and you wanna put a cam in it. What options do you have? You got a lot of options, but they're basically all about the same. Meaning the B cam, the E cam, you can squeeze an F cam in one of these cars with a stock bottom end and stock heads, that's the key. Or at least stock valve angle and stock valve size. I'm not gonna be the one to tell you to do that, but you can do it and I know because I did do it at one time. Also later on been a valve, so anyway, on to the next thing. So what other options do you have? Well, you got a trick flow stage one camshaft. Mm, that's about it in the trick flow line. You don't really wanna try to squeeze a uh, trick flow stage two or stage three in one of these cars. You got Anderson cams that do work pretty good. There's a lot of options, but I guess my point is this, they're all gonna be relatively similar. And that's simply because you don't have a lot of piston to valve clearance, especially if you go with aftermarket heads. If you start putting aftermarket heads with big valves and stuff like that, you're probably gonna run into some issues. But why does everybody hate on the B cam? I mean, it's really 50-50 on that. Let's be honest, it was one of the first hot camshafts to come out for one of these cars. The B cam hit the market, guys, and everybody had them. Everybody had a B cam or E cam. The rule of thumb was if you had a five-speed car, you put a B cam in it. If you had an automatic car, you put an E cam in it. And honestly, that still kind of holds true today. If you're gonna drop a camshaft in a stock bottom end car with stock pistons and stock heads and think you're gonna gain any horsepower, I'm sorry, you're just really not. on a really good day you gained an extra five or ten horsepower i'm just going to be real with you if you're trying to do that and that's what you're trying to accomplish you got a stock bottom end car and you're looking to make it faster do not do a camshaft first now that's my opinion can you put a set of roller rockers on it can you put a set of gears can you do all this other stuff supporting mods a set of heads and all that and really wake the car up yes absolutely but we're not talking about that. We're talking as a first mod. Now there's a caveat to that. If you like the sound of the camshaft, which honestly, that's the main reason why I like them, go ahead and slap it in there. you're not gonna notice that much of a difference. You probably will notice a little bit of a torque loss. Back in the day, we used to do that on purpose. We would over cam, overhead our cars because we did not have the tire technology that we have today. So what we would do is put this big cam, these big heads, all of this in these cars. And what it would do is kill the low end power and allow us to get out of the hole better. Because to be completely honest, the only thing that we really had was some BFGs back in the day that worked. Eh decently so that was an option for us is is that right to do no that's not the right thing to do guys don't go throwing a cam in your car to try to kill low end we have the tire technology these days to get these cars to hook for the most part and suspension technology i don't want to leave that part out so where does the b cam stack up with all of these other camshafts how does it stack up against the trick flow uh i could drag this video out with a lot of talk and a lot of comparison uh i'm just going to be real with you there's not enough horsepower difference on a stock bottom end car with stock heads. It, it, just pick a cam. Pick a cam, a manufacturer that you like, or pick one that sounds the best to you and throw it in there and be done with it. So let's take this one step further and let's say that you got a set of aftermarket heads now on your car. You got exhaust, you got gears, you got all this, all this like supporting mods, upper and lower intake and all that. Now, how does the B cam stack up with some of the other ones? There again still pretty close probably going to get a little bit more horsepower out of say like your comp cams and some of your andersons um a, a custom ground cam you're going to get more power out of that but 
if you're naturally aspirated and you're not running high compression and you're not running huge heads with maybe say like i said a gt40p heads or something like that you're not going to see that much of a difference you're not going to notice it seat of the pants meaning if somebody else had the exact same setup as you he just had a different cam say you had a b cam and he had a custom ground cam put in his car i'll almost guarantee you seat of the pants you're not going to be able to feel a difference maybe a little bit now some of you are going to argue that and that's fine everybody's got their own opinion so let's say you've got a built 331 347 you got a set of heads on it so now we're talking a higher compression engine with a better set of heads this is where it really starts to benefit you to go with a bigger cam or either a custom grind something like that this is where the b cam will kind of leave you a little short because what does a cam do well it determines how long the valves are open and how far they open up well there's other things that it does too but essentially that's what it does so when you get into the bigger heads higher compression needing to move more air that b cam that e cam that trick flow stage one really is just not going to give you what you want so you're going to need a cam that'll really open up the valves really let those heads flow so the last step that we're going to talk about boosted applications i tend to believe what richard holdner says he pretty much says whether it's a boosted application nitrous application doesn't matter his belief is you run the best performing camshaft in your na motor and then throw boost or nitrous or whatever on top of it and it's pretty much gonna make more horsepower just like it did whenever you put the camshaft in the car in a so with all that being said i will recommend a letter cam to you guys i absolutely will the f cam does work wonders with boost uh it, it just works good it's a good performing cam the point of this video is really to remind you guys who cares who cares put whatever camshaft you want to in your car i think you're going to be surprised in how they perform you're not going to notice a big difference seat of the pants there's going to be some keyboard warriors down here that are going to be telling you guys to always run a custom grind camshaft like if a horsepower matters to you then sure go custom grind or there's probably something out there better andrew's car Andrew's car is stock bottom end, complete bone stock bottom end car with GT40P heads, home ported, uh, Elderbrock, Victor Jr. Uh, intake, 650 Demon double pumper carburetor, which is plenty big, guys. For all of you saying go 750, 650 is plenty big. It's been rejetted and everything else. It works great. That car is nasty. It's got 175 shot on it, and it is quick. Guys, it is quick by today's standards. Is it the fastest thing out there? Hell no, of course not. But it is fast and it's got a B cam in it. My car's got a Trick Flow Stage 1 cam, which is basically like the equivalent. His car hits nasty. I mean, it's just, it's good. It's a good combo, guys. That B cam and those GT40 heads, it's a good combo. I'm all over the place with this, but one other thing I want to mention is you can get into just too big of a camshaft for what you need. You know, you put, you don't have the heads to flow the numbers and you get in here with a huge camshaft, you're just, you're just wasting time, honestly. I know this didn't really explain a lot about the B cam, but what I wanted to do is just remind you all, run the cam that you want to. Don't worry about what people say. If you like the sound of the B cam, run a B cam. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Looks like it's about to rain. And as always, thanks for watching. As always, I left out one of the most crucial parts of what I wanted to convey to you guys. Back in the day, with these cars, every horsepower mattered. Because there was not six, 700, 800 horsepower cars running around back then. Fox bodies and stuff like that kind of ruled the streets. So a camshaft selection really mattered. So that five horsepower difference could be the deciding factor back then as to who you could outrun and who you could you could be the talk of the town or the clown of the town it's not that way anymore so you got to ask yourself something when you're down by hundreds of horsepower really what is 510 horsepower going to matter buy whatever camshaft you can find afford like whatever it really doesn't matter now once you get into a built engine say you're going to build your stroker combo with some nice heads and stuff like that yeah sure i mean go with a custom grind camshaft so really that was the main focus of the video was to try to convey to you guys that back in the day it mattered if you had a b cam you were hot shit. But buy whatever it is that you like and don't worry about what somebody else says who cares all right guys i'm gonna go ahead wrap this video up and as always thanks for watching